Hi friends, we know that the One Health explores the links between human, animal and the ecosystem. Today, we have with us Dr. Julie Garnier, the co-founder and trustee of the prestigious Odyssey Conservation Trust. Let's listen what Dr. Julie has to discuss on how the One Health will address the public health threats like emerging diseases, loss of biodiversity, habitat fragmentation and loss of natural environment. Over to Dr. Julie. Well, I think um, if we want to talk about uh, One Health, biodiversity, conservation and uh, the future of our planet, uh, I think we need to realize how much damage first we've done to uh, nature, how we've used and abused nature and um, destroyed a lot of natural systems that existed to satisfy our needs and um, we've destroyed a lot of forests, we've damaged rivers, building dams, we are we're building cities obviously and that's indispensable and now we're finding ourselves with incredible health issues on a global scale and whether it's you know non-communicable diseases such as obesity, diabetes and a lot of a lot of problems and at the same time you know we're realizing we haven't addressed the major issues of poverty and uh, all the suffering that still exists in some parts of the world. In a way it's um, we're also realizing that we're seeing a lot of new diseases emerging and new diseases and which have emerged and we're seeing Ebola, we're seeing avian flu, we're seeing emerging infectious diseases which are threatening the planet at a global scale and that's where the One Health movement came up. But I think now we tend to see One Health in with a narrow eye of just zoonotic diseases and the problem with that is that we're looking at what can emerge being bad from nature when we actually need to realize that all these pathogens are also emerging because we've lost the diversity of nature, because we've destroyed habitats, because we're encroaching on natural habitats. And now I think there is a realization that biodiversity can bring so many benefits to health. But actually looking back fundamentally, our health is completely dependent on biodiversity. The air we breathe, the food we eat, just everything is dependent on biodiversity. And while we're trying to reconstruct and protect biodiversity, we tend to forget some people who have been neglected. Tribal people, indigenous people, local people who have been living within these biodiverse areas, who have developed an intimate relationship with these natural environments, who know how to protect it, who have got the incredible traditional knowledge about these areas, about their natural systems. And I think if we want to be serious about protecting what remains of nature, we need to support these people in protecting their incredible biodiverse environment. You know, 80% of the biodiversity remains in forests and a lot of indigenous local people live in this forest and they know exactly what to do to protect this forest. So we need to look at One Health certainly, health diseases, yes, but we need to look at nature, what nature can bring and we need to look at the people who have kept a harmony with nature who understand nature and I think this is the key to our future and this is the key to One Health looking at One Health for a healthier planet but with local people building on their knowledge it's also respecting the diversity of culture respecting their knowledge and learning from them yeah so the challenge now is to protect what remains of biodiversity in these remote areas and what we've got around us as well. We need to reconnect with nature as well and reintegrate, reinstall a bit of diversity, biodiversity in our day-to-day -day life. But I think if you look at conservation and sustainability and developing sustainable conservation programs, they need to be absolutely built on people's knowledge. 
local people's knowledge and what is their relationship with nature and build on that. And of course, you know, quite often these people are suffering from different um, health problems. But actually, what is, you know, what is their view of happiness and health? We need to help them, support them in improving health, in accessing basic needs, and there is no doubt about that. But we need to support them to conserve their biodiversity. At the same time, we need to empower them to access a better life, and that's access to basic, um, basic care and social services. But you know, the, the key really to biodiversity conservation efforts is to build on community-based programs and learning from the people and really understanding their relationship with their environment, learning from them, respecting them. Well, the, um, I was uh, very happy and lucky to be able to spend some time with uh, Cohort and Dr. Prejit and his team. And it's uh, really very nice and, and impressive to see the work that is being accomplished. I mean, first, trying to bring the concept of One Health into vet schools is really important. And that's what Cohort has managed to do. Thank you, Dr. Julie, for enlightening us on how the biodiversity laws and ecosystem damage can impact on public health. We also have learned how the One Health interventions could create societal impact to address the threats at health biodiversity interface. We'll meet with a new topic next week. Thank you.